He was a master of portraiture, and an uncompromising painter of realism. Although his skills were unmatched, his choice to render realistic images came at a time when the art world had gone in a different direction. During his lifetime, many accusations were brought towards him, and his work received little recognition. Whereas today, his work is both highly praised and surrounded in controversy. Thomas Cowperthwaite Aikens was born on July 25, 1844, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. His father, Benjamin Aikens, worked as a high school teacher, writer, and calligraphy teacher, and was well known throughout the higher society of the city. His mother, Caroline Cowperthwaite, raised Thomas along with his three younger sisters, Francis, Margaret, Caroline, and one younger brother, Benjamin Jr., who died before his first birthday. The Aikens household encouraged intellect, personal achievements, and scientific study and thought. The family also engaged in outdoor athletic activities like cycling, rowing, swimming, fishing, and sailing. As a child, Thomas was a master at calligraphy, thanks to lessons from his father. He also had an early interest in art and anatomy. He was a top student at his elementary school, as well as Central High School, where he graduated. A year after his high school graduation in 1861, the Civil War had begun in the United States. And his father Benjamin paid fees to keep his son from getting recruited. Unsure of what to do with his education, Aiken's interest in science and anatomy led him to take a sketch class at Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts. He later enrolled at Jefferson Medical College, where he was again at the top of his class. Despite his unique qualifications and knowledge in the medical field, his work in the arts took more and more of his time. At the academy, Aikens met his first known love interest, Emily Sartain. Emily had recently returned from a trip to Europe and spoke highly of life in Paris. She saw potential in Aikens' work and encouraged him to study there. The two would remain lifelong friends, but their relationship fell apart after Aikens left for Paris. In 1866, he was accepted at École de Beaux-Arts. Among other teachers, Aiken studied under Jean-Léon Jérôme, an academic painter whom he greatly admired. Léon Bonnat, another of Aiken's teachers, taught him how to use and balance color in his work. Aiken took time to master each step of drawing and painting before moving on to the next, and he eventually found his own style. After graduating in 1869, he took a trip to Madrid, where he was inspired by the Spanish masters like Giuseppe du Ribera, Francisco Goya, Titian, and the works of Diego Velázquez, who he was particularly drawn to. Aikens would spend six months in Spain, practicing his skills and enjoying Spanish culture before returning home to Philadelphia. Once home, he was determined to earn money as an artist. He focused on painting portraits and capturing the likeness of his subjects. Family members were used early on because of their availability, and they wouldn't charge him a fee. A series of paintings around this time focus on the sport of rowing, which Aikens had been involved in since he was a child. Max Schmidt in a single skull is the most famous in the series. While creating these realistically rendered paintings, he made careful mathematical calculations and measurements. While taking calligraphy lessons with his father, Aikens developed a grid system that allowed him to render sections of his paintings at a time. In 1872, he painted his first large-scale portrait of his then-love interest, Catherine Crow, and the two were later engaged. Other paintings created around this time focused on hunting and baseball, which Aikens also had been involved in as a child. After getting opinions on these latest works from former teacher Jean-Léon Jérôme, Jérôme submitted some of the works to the Paris Salon of 1875, the most important art exhibition of the time. Aikens himself sent works to New York and Philadelphia to try and gain exposure. The responses that he received were highly critical. In New York, they wouldn't accept his paintings. In Philadelphia, they thought his work was well done, but also boring. Me bored. Bored! Rah! And in Paris, they suspected that Aikens had used photographs to aid with his works, which he had. Although photography was still relatively new, Aikens was an early pioneer of working from photography. 
At the time, use of photography was highly criticized in the art world, and artists that acknowledged using it were seen as illegitimate, and their reputation suffered. In 1874, Aikens was asked to teach the Philadelphia Sketch Club, where he found his love of teaching early on. The following year, he painted his most ambitious painting yet with The Gross Clinic, featuring his former teacher, Dr. Samuel D. Gross. The painting was exhibited at the Centennial Exhibition in Fairmount Park, Philadelphia, but was not prominently displayed. Many critics felt that the painting, with its small amount of blood, was not fit for public viewing. Society at the time had not yet embraced the desensitization of blood and violence. Still, there was no denying the amount of skill required to create such a painting. He created several more portraits next, including an official, albeit unconventional, portrait of President Rutherford B. Hayes that was not liked by the Union League who commissioned it, and has since been lost. Aiken started teaching at the Pennsylvania Academy as a supervisory instructor in 1877. He was well liked by students, and officially became a professor the next year. Unlike previous instructors at the school, Aikens put emphasis on working from live, nude models. As an instructor, he first met artist Susan McDowell, who was one of his most promising students. The two eventually began a relationship, following the death of Aikens' fiancée in 1879. The Academy made Aikens its director in 1882. Although he and his students spent more hours working from live models than any other art school in the world at Pennsylvania Academy, Aiken still used photographs extensively in his own work, as well as working it into the Academy's curriculum. Aikens and his former student Susan McDowell were married in 1884, and together they moved into a studio. That same year, he received a commission for the painting Swimming, which was completed in 1885. The painting used several Academy students, along with Aikens himself, all posed in the nude. The painting was rejected by its commissioner, and resulted in the Academy reworking their rules and guidelines for students' modeling. Aikens was under increased scrutiny from the Academy for what they deemed as inappropriate behavior. Reports were coming in from students that included telling inappropriate jokes and using obscene language in the classroom, failing to supervise his students, continuing his use of student modeling, occasionally touching nude models, and being nude himself in front of students. Another disturbing aspect during this time were the photographs taken by Aikens. The Naked series is a collection of nude photographs taken of himself and students. This by itself isn't enough to raise concerns, considering that he and his students were regularly painting from nude models but other photographs of young girls are more concerning, such as his photograph, African American Girl Nude Reclining on Couch. Aikens was becoming more and more of a liability to the Academy, when during a lecture in 1886, in front of a group of female students, he removed the loincloth of a male model to better illustrate the model's anatomy. The incident was met by outrage from students and teachers alike, and he was forced to resign. After Aikens left, the Academy brought additional allegations against him, involving incest and sexual misconduct. These issues were dealt with privately, but they would blacklist him from the Academy. After this incident, Aikens and his wife Susan moved back in with Aikens' parents. In one of only a few trips outside of Philadelphia, Aikens took a 10-week vacation to the Badlands in Dakota Territory. The trip gave him a small glimpse of cowboy life. <laughs> And he would later paint Cowboys in the Badlands in 1888. After returning home, he continued painting portraits, including one of poet Walt Whitman, who he would become friends with. A group of dedicated students who had petitioned the Academy for Aikens to stay started the Art Students League of Philadelphia in 1886. Aikens painted several of the students' portraits during his time teaching. He would teach the League for seven years in addition to teaching the Art Students League of New York and other schools in New York, Washington, D.C., and Philadelphia. Occasionally, his students were involved in painting certain elements in his many portrait paintings. One of his students was fellow artist Samuel Murray, a lifelong friend who worked alongside Aikens for much of his later life. In addition to his portraits at the time, another ambitious painting was done in 1889 with the Agnew Clinic, which depicted Dr. Hayes Agnew and many of his students during a lecture at the dissecting table. 
The painting was met with little to no reaction from critics, and was considered a failure by Aikens. He would never again attempt another medical or surgery-related painting. Encouraged by his friend Samuel Murray, Aikens found commissioned work for sculptures on the Soldiers and Sailors Arch at Grand Army Plaza in Brooklyn, New York. He worked alongside sculptor William Rudolph O'Donovan, with O'Donovan sculpting the figures and Aikens sculpting the horses. Murray and Aikens continued their work together with sculptures for the Witherspoon Building in Philadelphia, which have since been relocated. Aikens had his first and only solo exhibition in 1896, where he exhibited more than 30 paintings, but was unable to sell any of them. Further controversy and a scandal in which his former student, Lillian Hammett, accused him of inappropriate conduct continued to diminish his reputation. Similarly, Aiken's niece, Ella Crowell, who had once accused her uncle of molestation, took her own life in 1897. Aiken's was an easy target for blame since Ella had spent time in Aiken's studio. His teaching career finally ended after these allegations were brought against him. After Ella's death, Aiken's traveled to Maine to paint the portrait of Professor Henry A. Rowland, who built the first multiplex telegraph that same year. Around this time, boxing became a popular sport around Philadelphia. Aikens watched hundreds of fights over the years, and also painted a series of paintings that focus more on the human emotion of the sport than the action. With the seedy perception of the sport at the time, the paintings were not well received publicly, and Aikens, after painting Wrestlers in 1899, was discouraged from painting any additional sports. And once again, he turned to portraits. Oftentimes, his portrait paintings were seen as too realistic, highlighting wrinkles, veins, and other unflattering elements of his subjects. Some of his portraits were rejected by the subjects because of this. Soon, though, Aikens painted some notable portraits, such as Leslie W. Miller, which had finally gained him some public recognition as it received awards from the National Academy of Design and the Carnegie Institute. Aikens also began a series of clergy portraits around this time. Although he was never a religious person, he was respectful of fellow educators and dedicated professionals. In 1911, along with his friend Samuel Murray, Aikens became sick from milk that was laced with formaldehyde. He would never fully recover from this event, as his vision rapidly decreased and he produced far fewer paintings than in previous years. His use of lead paints and toxic art materials, including heavy metals, also led to a decline in his health. He painted his last painting, Portrait of Dr. Edward Anthony Spitzka, in 1913, by which time his vision was failing and he had asked his wife Susan to assist with the portrait. The next year, the Pennsylvania Academy displayed the painting The Agnew Clinic, which was later bought by Dr. Albert Barnes for his collection. The purchase sparked interest in the art community at the time. By 1916, Aiken's health had continued to decline and he was unable to walk with his friend Sam Murray and wife Susan helping him to get around. Thomas Aikens died on June 25, 1916, in his Philadelphia home, which was the same home that previously belonged to his father, and where Aikens had lived for most of his life. The year after his death, the Metropolitan Museum of Art opened a memorial exhibit featuring 60 of his paintings. A month after that, the Philadelphia Academy opened an exhibition featuring 129 of his works. His expert renderings in realism inspired early 20th century artists, such as Robert Henry, George Bellows, and Edward Hopper. Despite the growing popularity in abstract art, Aikens' work continues to inspire artists working in realism. Dedications to Thomas Aikens and many of his works can be found around Philadelphia today. But in today's environment of the Me Too movement, there are many people who want to see his work and legacy erased. So what do you think about Aiken's work, and the controversy, which was well known during the artist's own lifetime? Any thoughts you have on this artist, let me know in the comments. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please support this channel by liking and subscribing.